You're watching Telecom TV Spotlight on 5G series. It's Monday the 21st of February and this is The Slice. Hello, I'm Guy Daniels, Director of Content for Telecom TV and welcome to the first of our news analysis programmes in the lead up to the MWC 22 event in Barcelona. We'll be here with three programmes this week before stepping up the tempo with a daily live show during the week of MWC itself. And joining me on the slice is my colleague Ray Lemaitre, Editorial Director for Telecom TV. And Ray, you're going to be on site next week, finally attending an in-person event. I am, Guy, my first major face-to-face -face work gathering since late 2019. And there are some parts of me that are looking forward to it, although my liver isn't one of them, I have to say. Uh, it's going to be challenging for all involved, of course, but it's going to be great to talk to lots of people and hopefully meet some new faces in Barcelona next week, where I'll be pacing the show floor and checking out the tapas bars with our new recruit, Telecom TV Deputy Editor, Yanni Boyadziva. I'm so looking forward to seeing what you and Yanni discover in Barcelona and who you bump into along the way. Now, although we are a week away, the MWC related news is already hitting the wires. First of the major players to announce was Ericsson, which held an online briefing last Thursday. It focused mainly on new antenna products, but also had a new offering for the core and edge, the Ericsson Edge Exposure Server, which builds on its existing 4G and 5G cloud core server. But what benefits will it provide to operators? One such capability, for example, is that we have an edge application discovery. So what does that really mean? It means that we are now facilitating from the device to the edge application to ensure that the device that's going to be using the application, number one, is authorized to use it, but also that it actually have traffic conditions are such that you can guarantee a low latency and that this is something that now is the right opportunity to, if, for example, you're going to have a certain SLA, that you are under conditions where this can be, uh, where this actually can be achieved. So adding this now capability, we believe we are really opening the door and seeing how we are now making it easier to scale the edge business. You know, it is complex technology. Right? And I think it really builds, as I said in the beginning, it builds on the foundation of the 5, 5G standalone networks and the 5G core networks. And these are not yet commonplace. I would say from, the core, from our core network, I mean, we have 55 contracts, but we have today 10 networks that are live. So I think it's more, it's, it's natural that it's an evolution. It, it, the foundation needs to be in place before you can really you know, see that it goes into a bigger availability then in the market. Ray, interesting development there, utilizing Ericsson's existing cloud core exposure server, which it says is in use by 30 telcos, and linking this edge strategy with standalone 5G. So the message really is hurry up and buy and deploy 5G core, ideally from us, and then you can make a go of edge. Yeah, and get a return on investment for 5G. Uh, a lot of hopes are being pinned on the capabilities of the 5G standalone core to enable a broad range of enterprise services that will deliver new revenue streams. The next couple of years are going to be critical. If there isn't an uptick in Industry 4.0 related revenues for telcos by 2024, then the business case for 5G just might be questionable. Uh, the other main point to make about Ericsson's pre-MWC announcements is the focus on energy efficiency, which the vendor says is now front of mind for its customers, understandably. Uh, we'll be delving more into that topic later on this week. Thanks, Ray. We certainly will. And of course, Ericsson has its usual press conference on the morning of the first day of MWC, but this will be virtual this year, and I'm sure we'll hear more news from that. Earlier today, Deutsche Telekom held its MWC press conference exclusively online. DT opened its event from Bonn with a focus on network slicing. As well as announcing a project with broadcaster RTL Deutschland, the telco also claimed a world first. Reliable connections are important for many customers with response-critical applications. 
That applies also to companies which have sites spread across many countries, globally located company sites. Now, Deutsche Telekom and Ericsson demonstrate a ground groundbreaking proof of concept implementation. We establish a connection with guaranteed quality of service between Germany and Poland via 5G end-to-end -end slicing. Together with an SD-WAN solution from Deutsche Telekom, the connection can be managed flexibly via a customer portal. And the solution ensures that different service parameters can be operated across countries and that network resources can be allocated flexibly. And we are actually the first worldwide to demo this proof of concept. Ray, we saw Deutsche Telekom there hot off the press with news on its cross-border network slicing with SLA support and resource allocation. It's an important development. Yes, uh, Deutsche Telekom has showed its hand early this year with a number of announcements ahead of MWC22, which is a great move and I expect it will attract more people to the DT booth on the Barcelona show floor. Now, as well as a proof of concept on cross-border slicing, which will be enabled by its 5G standalone core and which will be of particular interest to enterprise users, the German telco also unveiled its plan for TIOT, a global IoT service developed and operated in conjunction with its subsidiary T-Mobile US. It outlined some key green network developments and provided an update on its disaggregation efforts, uh, including Open RAN and its multi-vendor disaggregated broadband network gateway, or BNG. Now, I asked Claudia Nemat whether Deutsche Telekom's 5G standalone core, which enables network slicing, is already commercially deployed and able to offer these services. So we have actually 5G SA available on all our 3.7 gigahertz antennas. And we also, res we also reserve uh, the 700 megahertz for that. We will actually make it commercially or available um, <laughs> with the proliferation of the new devices in the context of this year. As I said, we consider specifically important end-to-end -end slicing for cases which I explained here. And for us, it's very important that we do not take just one specific item. For us, it's 5G, also 5GS alone is an end technology. So it's 4G, 5G, 5G sent uh, alone. Um, plus the question which frequencies we are using where to have both the aerial coverage as well as the speed and the latency. So therefore, if the background of the question is, can we deliver the best commercial connectivity experience on the basis of 5G and 5G SA, right now, yes, we can. Great question there, Ray. Uh, moving on, let's look ahead to MWC itself. And you've already created a crafty little acronym to help us focus on the key technology topics, which you've called SCOPE. Security, cloud, open RAN, private networks, and energy efficiency. Very catchy. And today we're going to look at two of these, starting with open RAN. Thanks, Guy. Yes, open RAN, not only one of the hottest topics, but also one of the most contentious for so many reasons. It's certainly disruptive. And we can expect quite a lot of noise around open RAN during MWC 22. The ORAN Alliance is holding an update presentation on the Deutsche Telekom stand late Tuesday afternoon, when we can expect to hear a lot of encouraging statements and announcements from the operators that want broader adoption of this alternative network architecture, because they want to see scale and accelerated R&D from the telecom tech community. But there are still a lot of tough and important questions to be answered. Is an open RAN deployment more hassle than it's worth? Do mobile network operators really need greater vendor diversification? How successful will the likes of Rakuten Symphony and NTT Docomo be as they take their integration and cloud-based tech portfolios to the global market? Is the open RAN market really taking off? 
Uh, Rakuten Symphony, of course, has already made its own pre-MWC22 announcement, unveiling its SimWorld, which is essentially the packaged, productized, and enhanced version of the Rakuten Communications Platform, or RCP, which is the cloud-oriented virtualized collection of functions and tools that are used to plan, build, and run the Rakuten Mobile 4G and 5G networks in Japan, of which Symphony is offering along with systems integration expertise to any network operator worldwide that's interested in deploying an open RAN enabled network. For me though, the key discussions and developments in Barcelona will be around the RAN Intelligent Controller or RIC, which is the brains of the open RAN architecture and also about the apps that run on it. Now, this is where we can expect to see some real innovation. And I hope that during MWC 22, we'll hear from multiple companies about the X apps and R apps they have developed to run on either their own or third parties RIC platform. Yes, Ray, I hope so too. Uh, so that's open RAN. Let's move on to another element of scope, which is security. Yes, and security, of course, is just so critical, so important. Uh, network, application, platform and device security should be part of pretty much any conversation during MWC 22, especially as network operators fight for the attention and dollars of enterprise users who would surely ask about security and service level agreements before feeds and speeds. Now, there's no denying that network security doesn't get the proportionate investment in time, tech and human resources that it deserves in the telecom sector. But it's also one of the hardest parts of any strategy to address and for non-specialists to understand. And it's constantly morphing as operators adopt more distributed and increasingly open network architectures and rely on third party platforms. And then there's a debate about whether open networks are more or less secure than legacy or traditional systems. A debate, of course, that ties back to the challenges or opportunities associated with Open RAN. Now, central to network and server security developments is AI and the cloud. Without the automation that AI delivers and the processing power of major cloud platforms, enabling reliable security is going to be nigh on impossible. I'm sure we'll hear about this combination aplenty in Barcelona. Well, we'll certainly be watching out for news announcements in both security and open run. I suspect there will be plenty. Now, as well as reporting on the news, we have a whole week of special spotlight on 5G programs for you. And you can watch them on demand or via the playlist on Telecom TV, which will be running pretty much all day, Monday through Thursday. Strategy Outlook returns with focused discussions on the 5G core, RAN, edge and private networks and the cloud. Plus we'll have related interviews from CSP executives and key vendor partners. And back by popular demand is our top 10 mobile moments series, where Ray and I look back at Telecom TV's 20 years of coverage of MWC. We serve up a fresh edition of The Slice every day of MWC with all the important news and analysis from the Telecom TV team. And then the following week, when we are all back at our desks, it's time for the after show, our live Q&A program. So keep an eye on the agenda pages to see who will be taking part. Before we end today's show, and by way of a preview of what's coming up on Spotlight on 5G, here's a sample of some of the interviews and discussions we have in store. One of the um, one of the things that's happened in the industry, especially um, with the pandemic and people working from home, there's a realization that security and connectivity in some ways come together or overlap. And in the center of that Venn diagram is where you see secure connectivity. People want to have solutions that enable them to deal with the workers coming from home, coming from on the road, in the office, accessing applications in the cloud or accessing applications in the data center. They want to be able to support all those modes of work in a very consistent way. So getting good quality of service and enforcing consistent security policy. We have a good track on the open run on three subjects. One, the first one, we want to have a better solution, for example, for sharing networks for indoor and, and rural. 
But by the way, there are some specifications that are under finalization in the Oran Alliance for that in, in 2022. We want as well, and it's normal to have the best cloud run uh, perspective and to have the best technologies there. And the last pillar for us, it's around the uh, automation, the zero touch, where we have quite a number of parameters with a 5G massive MIMO. Uh, and it's normal because you have a uh, you don't cover everywhere, every time, but just at the time it's used and the place it's used. So you have quite a software perspective there and parameter setting. I think if you look specifically at the radios, what we'll see is a much higher capability radio in the future. So there was an initial rollout of massive MIMO panels, especially in Asia. But um, as we go forward, what we'd expect to see is much higher performance uh, radios with lots more compute uh, to deliver the responsiveness and low latency required for interacting with end users. And then I think on the baseband, what we're seeing is the disaggregation of the hardware and the software. So that's starting to take place at the moment. That's all for today's edition of The Slice. Please join Ray and me again on Wednesday for the second of our MWC preview shows. Until then, thanks for watching and goodbye.